Hallelujah. Father, we worship you. We ascribe our greatness to you. Thank you, Lord. We sing Hosanna to your name. It's a privilege, Lord, to stand and worship you. Hosanna to you, Jesus. Oh 
Hallelujah. Father, we want to say thank you. Thank you for today. Thank you for this month of September. Thank you for bringing us into your presence tonight to study at your feet. Father, be thou exalted in Jesus' name. Lord, as we look into your word today, we pray that you open our eyes of understanding in the name of Jesus. We pray that our hearts will be receptive even to receive from you. And you will help us, O oh God, to be doers of your word and not hearers only in Jesus' name. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. We are welcome this evening to Digging Deep. So we are in a season, and um, this particular season, in this month of September, we've been discussing What has been titled the limit breaker. The limit breaker. And by the grace of God, for this digging deep, I'll be doing um, two series of teaching this week and next week, um, Tuesday, on this particular topic, the limit breaker. So today, as a way of introduction, what is a limit? What is a limit? If we say something is a limit, what does it mean? A limit is a peg. A limit is an hindrance or a barrier that defines restriction. On Sunday, pastor was preaching and he also said the same thing. That when you talk about limits, you are talking about restrictions. And he also mentioned that a, another synonym for limit is restriction. Praise the name of the Lord. For instance, you are driving on the road and you are going on full speed. And you see a speed breaker. It's a limit. It's saying to you that you can't go beyond this. It's, the, it's, it's telling you that you have to slow down so that you don't go beyond this particular speed. Praise the name of the Lord. So to be limited is to be restricted. To be limited is to be resisted and to be restrained. Restrained. And I'm sure we all agree that even as believers, at one point or the other in our life's journey, we may begin to feel some form of limitations. Maybe you feel a sense of not being where God wants you to be. You, are in a, you have been in a particular position or situation for so long. And you know that you are not supposed to be here. You are supposed to have gone farther than this. It could be a limitation. Praise the name of the Lord. Or you feel that you are not in the place where you ought to be in destiny. 
or you just know that you've done all that you could do, but you, you, you seem not to be moving forward. It may be a limitation. It may be as a result of a particular limitation. Praise the name of the Lord. So last week, Tuesday, Dick in Dick Pajola show in his teaching on grace to overcome limits. He highlighted two things. He said that limits can be real or perceived. Limits can be real or perceived. Now, and that is what I'm going to be dwelling on this Tuesday and next week Tuesday. There are some limitations that arises from the mind, which you can also call perceived limits. And the next one we'll be talking about are real limits, which could also be caused by spiritual reasons. And we'll be looking into that as we move on. Now, today we are going to be zeroing on limitations of the mind. Limitations of the mind. What is the mind? What is the mind? The mind in a human or other conscious being is the element, the part of a being, substance or process that reasons. There is a part of a human being. It deals with reasoning. It deals with thinking. It deals with feeling. That's the mind wills, perceives, the mind perceives, the mind judges, etc. Praise the name of the Lord. In psychology, the mind is the totality of the conscious and unconscious mental processes and activities. So we'll be talking on the limitations of the mind. As Christians, many times we are limited, even in our mind. Now, when we talk about the limitations of the mind, these are limits that have been set based on the way we think, the way we think about ourselves, the way we think about our surroundings, that there is a particular thing, I can't go beyond this. I can't go more than this. I can't achieve more than this. They are usually thoughts of being inferior, thoughts of being inadequate or unprepared. And they are thoughts that lead to feelings of intimidation, fear of rejection, fear of failure, and insecurities, and so on, and so forth. But what you need to know, as believers, is that oftentimes, the thoughts that comes to our mind to limit us, when you bring down these thoughts, it reveals that the basis for them are usually false and unfounded. How do I mean? Many times we are limited by our mind, maybe as a result of our thoughts, as a result of our surroundings, and, and all of that. But if you really look at it carefully and deeply, you would understand that these limits that, has been, that, 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 that we have based on our mind, you'll find out that mostly these limits are false. Praise the name of the Lord. Most times you'll find out that they are false and unfounded. But what happens is that the devil keeps us imprisoned through our thoughts. The devil likes to keep us imprisoned through our thoughts. The devil likes to keep us imprisoned by sowing thoughts of limitations in our minds. Apostle Paul said, he said, I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ that does what? That strengthens me. That should be, that, that should be our mindset as a believer. That I can do all things. I can achieve all things. I can do anything that I set my mind to achieve. As long as God is by my side. Praise the name of the Lord. So the devil wants us to have thoughts of limitations. Thoughts of I'm not good enough. I can't achieve this. I can't get it done. Nobody has done it in my family. I can't do it. We have so much limitations. Limitations in our minds. And these things, they are there. Consciously or unconsciously. They are there in our, in, in our minds. Let's read 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 3 to 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 to 5. I want us to read it together. So I'm going to give us a moment. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 5. All right, let's read it together. One, two, go. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought. 
to the obedience of Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. It says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. There are strongholds in our hearts, in our minds, that has told us that you can't, you can't achieve this, you can't achieve that, you can't go beyond this level. Limitations of the mind. But the scripture says that the weapons of our warfare are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down imaginations. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. And finally, it says bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Limitations of the mind. Like Pastor George established on Sunday, he said, God is not limited. God is what? Not limited. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, my God is not limited. Say to yourself, my God is not a limited God. Praise the name of the Lord. So Pastor established us on Sunday, he said, God is not limited. And as I was going through the scriptures, I also agree with him. In Psalm 82, verse 6. Let's look at Psalm 82, verse 6 in the King James Version. Psalm 82, verse 6. I want us to also read it together. Psalm 82, verse 6. One, two, go. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. So what that scripture is telling us is this. Pastor has told us that our God is not limited. And this scripture is telling us, he said, just like we, our father is a God, we are also gods. Can I get an amen? Ye are gods. And all of you are what? Children of the most high. So, since our God is not limited, and we are also gods, being children of the most high, we are not supposed to be limited. So that should be our mindset. So whenever the thoughts come in our consciousness and in our subconscious, thoughts of limitation, we are supposed to renew our mind by the word of God. My God is not limited, therefore I cannot be limited. Amen. And God also assured us in Micah chapter 2 verse 13. Micah chapter 2 verse 13. I will read from the Amplified Version. It says, the breaker, the Messiah, will go up before them, liberating them. They will break out, pass through the gate, and go out. So their king goes on before them. Hallelujah. The first thing in that scripture, how, how the scripture characterizes God. He says God is what? The breaker. Did you get that? God is what? God is the breaker. The Messiah is the breaker. He will go before me. He will break through. He will pass in through the gate and go out through it. So God is the limit breaker. And because we are God's children of the Most High, we are God expects us also to be what? To be limit breakers. Because God is on our side, nothing shall be impossible. One of the things that God has told us this morning, he said he will go before us. And when God goes before a man, what happens? Limits are broken. When God goes before a man, what happens? Mountains keep as rams. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, let me mention this here. That the first step into breaking one's limitation is to actually admit that one is limited. And I'll take that again. Yes, our God is the limit breaker. Yes, my God is my father. I am the son of the most high and I am also a God. And because my father is a limit breaker, I am also a limit breaker. But what happens many oftentimes is that the devil begins to sow seeds, thoughts in our minds that does now make us to shrink. And you'll find out that there are limits here and there. As you are trying to break through. So the first thing to do when we find ourselves in such a situation is to accept that truly there are limits around me. Truly there are limits around me and I need to do something about it. 
there is a quote that is attributed to Albert Einstein. He says, once we accept our limits, we go beyond them. Once we accept our limits, what happens? We go beyond them. Because if we don't sit down and look at it carefully, and we are telling ourselves, oh, I don't have any limit. Oh, I don't have any limit, any limit. And we are struggling. We are struggling. We are struggling. You may not be able to go forward. Yes, the first thing we accept, yes, I have noticed that this thing, whenever I want to get it done, there's so much limitation in my mind. There's so much thoughts coming. The first thing is to accept it and to face it. Abba says, once we accept our limits, we go beyond them. Now, let me tell you two stories quickly. There's a story um, I heard many, many years ago. It was a story, it was more like an experiment done uh, on an animal. This particular animal was, was tied, it had, had a leash on, on the neck and was tied to maybe a tree for many years. And you know, whenever the animal wants to go forward, it finds out that it can't go beyond that particular place because there's something around its neck tied to something. So it tries to go forward and then it discovers it can't go. It tries to go forward, it discovers it can't go. That's a limit. That's a restriction. So after a while, maybe weeks, maybe months, the, the animal got tired. It got tired because anytime it wants to go beyond that, that limit, it's impossible. And after a while, somebody went there and removed the leash from the, from the neck of this particular animal. And do you know what? Even though that particular limit has been removed from the neck of this animal, it never went beyond that particular spot. Praise the name of the Lord. What does that tell us? Because he's been trying to achieve something, he's been trying to go beyond that, trying to go beyond that, go beyond that. Something in the subconscious, we always tell that animal, you can't do it. You can't go beyond this. You can't go beyond this. At the point that the deliverance even came, it, it was still there. Praise the name of the Lord. So when we talk about the mind, it's a very powerful tool that we need to deal with. And then the second story that I'm going to tell us it is my own personal story. Many years ago, I did a particular business. And, you know, as a business person, I was expecting a particular profit as a return on investment. But some, somehow uh, along the line, the, 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 the profit I was expecting came out very low. Far low beyond what I was expecting. So that happened and anytime I want to do that particular business again, even though it's a business that I love to do, I'm passionate about, anytime I want to do it, you know, that particular experience, the previous experience, it just comes to mind. It just comes to mind. And before you know it, I begin to think about, oh, what if I do it again and it went the way of the last time? Praise the name of the Lord. And for several months, this thought was there until I came to a point and said to myself, this thing has become a limitation. Praise the name of the Lord. This thing has become a limitation and I know that I need to deal with it. Because if I don't deal with it, if I do that business again, because of the multi multitude of, of, of the thoughts in my subconscious, you just find out that the limitation will just stay there. Praise the name of the Lord. So, it is very important for us as believers not to be limited in our mind. Every limitation that has come upon us through our subconscious, through the things that we have experienced, the thoughts, the multitude of thoughts that we have had, we need to deal with them. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So, what do I do once I have evaluated and, asked and know that I suffer from the limitations of the mind. What do I do? Once I know that I suffer from the limitations of the mind. The answer is in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. Because if you don't deal with it, like I mentioned, even though you have prayed and God has given you deliverance, you just find that out, you, you just find out that you are still stuck. And, and, and it's powerful. It's something we must, we must, we must get deliverance from. I, I was watching a movie yesterday and a, a, a particular man who was well-to-do and, and all of that, doing well, he, he wanted to get married. And all the relationships that this man has had was always, um, wasn't um, always 
it never ended well. He wanted to get married, but the, 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 the relationship wasn't, wasn't ending well, as it were. So he saw a particular woman that he wanted to propose to. And there was this mentor that the man went to meet. And he went to his mentor. He told his mentor, he said, I have seen a lady that I like and I want to propose to her. But he said, but I'm afraid. He said, I'm afraid because you know my history. Whenever I propose to a lady and then once they come close before it, they break my heart. Praise the name of the Lord. And the mentor said something. He said, so, so, okay, so this man went to his mentor and said, so the mentor said, why not? Propose to her. And the man said to his mentor, he said, what if I sink? And the man looked at him. He said, what if you swim? Praise the name of the Lord. He said, what if I sink? The man looked at him and said, what if you swim? Praise the name of the Lord. And at the end of the day, he swam. <laughs> Hallelujah. But the point here is that even though we have these limitations in our heart, we have this limitation in our heart, we must be conscious about it and we need to deal with it. So how do I deal with it as I begin to round up? Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. You see, this is very powerful and I want us to understand it. Because I am not saying, like I have established, that there are so many limitations. Today we are talking about that of the mind. Because even when you have prayed, even when you have been delivered, you still need to deal with the mind. You still need to deal with the mind. Because you might have received your deliverance, the limitation is no longer there, but if you don't deal with the mind, you still find out that you are restricted. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, only acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by what? By the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So you need to be transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. Now, how do I renew my mind? Through the word of God. You renew your mind through the word of God. I can do all things. Through Christ who strengthens me. You look at the word of God daily and you renew your mind. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So, as you begin to do that, you'll find out that whenever those thoughts, the limitations of the mind, whenever, whenever those thoughts come across your mind, you'll find out that because of the abundance of the word of God in you, faith will arise. And by the, by the time the word of God within you is more than the thoughts that are bringing limitations to your mind, you find out that you are liberated. Praise the name of the Lord. I pray that God will help us in Jesus' name. So you renew your mind daily through the word of God. And not just that. Having renewed your mind daily through the word of God, you begin to take actions. Let somebody say, take action. Take action. As you are trying to take action, you begin to imagine, what if I sink? What if I sink? What if I sink? But then, what if you swim? And the reality is that you will surely swim because God is by your side. God is by your side. And Bible says that everything you lay your hands upon shall prosper. So it goes beyond, uh, it even goes beyond business and blessings and all of that. There are so many limitations that we have come across in our, that, 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 that has been a stronghold, as it were, in our mind. We need to realize it. We need to face it. And then we need to overcome it. And as we begin to do so, I pray that God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, before we, as we round up, I want us to take this short confession. I want us to take this short confession. And by the grace of God, next week, like I said, we'll be discussing more on um, real limitations, which could be caused by spiritual reasons. Yes, we are all aware that that, uh, 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 that as Christians, even the Bible we read earlier, it said the weapons of our warfare are not carnal and all of that. We'll talk about how to deal with those spiritual limitations. But more importantly, our mind must be liberated. Praise the name of the Lord. Let us take this short confession together. Because one of the ways through which we renew our mind 
the major way rather, like I established, is by looking at the word of God daily. And as you behold the word of God daily, I will say it and I will continue to say it. You draw up a confession for yourself. And as you draw up a confession, and as you begin to decree those confessions to yourself daily, you find out that your, your mind is liberated. And as your mind begins to liberate, you need to begin to take actions. And as you do so, God will help you in Jesus' name. Now, say with me, Heavenly Father, I thank you for this season of breaking limits. I understand that you are the limit breaker. And because I am your child, I am also a limit breaker. Therefore, Heavenly Father, I decree and I declare no more limitations in my life in the name of Jesus. Once again, I decree and I declare that from today, no more limitations in my life in the name of Jesus. I receive deliverance from every thought that has held me captives. I need you to say that one more time. I receive deliverance from every thought that has held me captives in the name of Jesus. Therefore, Lord Jesus, I decree that my mind is liberated from every form of limitations in the name of Jesus. And as I begin to take actions, I decree that I will succeed because God is with me. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for breaking every limit in my life. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let's clap our hands together for Jesus. I believe that you have been blessed today. It's time for us to give our offerings. The details of the um, accounts is on the screen. So please, let's package our offerings and give unto God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you once again for this evening. Thank you for this time of study in your presence. Lord, we pray, O oh God, that even as we go, Lord, you will reveal yourself more and more to us. In this season that you have spoken to us through your son, your servant, our pastor, Pastor George, that it is a season to break limits. Lord, we decree that in this season, there shall be no more limitations in the name of Jesus. Every limit shall be broken in the name of Jesus. And you will give us the grace to overcome in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that you accept our offerings tonight and you will bless it in return. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Hallelujah. So the um, announcements are also on the screen. You see all the um, um, venues for our meetings. Sunday meeting is two services on Sunday, 9.30 to 10.30 and um, 11 to 12. Praise the name of the Lord. And all other uh, weekly activities are available on all the social platforms. Amen. Let us share the grace together in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercies shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you.